r slash ask reddit redditors who rage quit a job without thinking what was the last straw my insufferable a-hole manager followed me after work to my second job because she didn't believe i had one and was just using it as an excuse to get out early my manager at my second job said there's some crazy lady banging on the doors yelling your name so i grabbed my uniform from my bag opened the door threw it in her face and told her to duck off I think your old manager might be a psycho. Can't believe how far she went. She was insane. It was at Blockbuster and I worked for her for less than 2 weeks before that night. She would get me to put the new movies out by taking the boxes they were shipped in. Dumping them on the floor till they were all mixed up. And then having me sort them. I have no idea what her problem was. They also only gave me a XXL t-shirt to wear as my uniform. I normally wear a medium. It looked like a dress. I hated it so much. Call center. Inbound sales. They told me I needed to have higher sales numbers and gave me training materials tools to help. It suggested that if the customer wanted only one service we offered. That I add on other services after the call had ended and hope the customer didn't notice. I questioned this and they said that is how Dave has the highest sales for the past 6 months and I should follow his example. Yee. No. So. The building my job was in closed down at 9pm. Everybody except security had to get out so they could shut everything down. One of my supervisors, I had 8 of them, yes it was like office space, kept scheduling me until 9.30pm. I repeatedly brought us up at the end of the night, and was always told no, that's just a mistake, you need to leave. Fast forward 3 months, I get called into a disciplinary meeting. The reason? I kept leaving early. I had like 8 attendance points from leaving early because one of my idiot bosses, who worked in the same building and definitely should have known when it closes, couldn't figure out how to schedule. I explain my side, which is pretty ducking obvious, and they say they'll hold off on any disciplinary action while they look into it. A couple days later they told me they weren't going to remove those attendance points. I told them to shove it up their ass. Walked out and went to a concert with some of my, now former, co-workers. Attendance points are complete horseshit in an office setting. Unless you not being in at very specific times prevents someone else from doing their job it serves no purpose. It's just a bunch of shit scare tactics and another bogus reason to fire you if they dislike you. That last part. That's exactly why it's there. To cover their butts if when they fire you for cause. Even in it will states. Good luck firing anyone without paperwork. Unemployment insurance is coming to collect. Director of a preschool I worked at pulled me into her office and literally foaming at the mouth told me I had no business going to my higher up to report suspected child abuse. Walked out. Never looked back. If I'm not mistaken. The preschool is now shut down. My mom did the same thing. Working at a preschool in the South Bronx in the 80s she had a little girl who would cry every time she sat down. So my mom brought her into the bathroom and asked her what was wrong. This girl had burns on her butt because her dad had sat her on a hot stove to punish her. My mom went straight to administration where she was told they were aware of the problem and had been working with him on parenting classes since he was a single dad. This guy was already taking parenting classes and sat his minus 5 year old daughter on a hot stove to punish her. My mom decided right there that she couldn't work for people who would cover this up and not report him and that was her last day. She then went home and reported him herself. I was working at a local bike shop at the time and had a minorish surgery. The shop called me and told me I needed to come in because another mechanic called in sick. They were aware of my surgery and just didn't care. I quit during that phone conversation. I mean, presumably you had called in sick first, due to the surgery and all that. Yep gave them a month's notice and made sure to use vacation time. Learn the art of not answering the phone from your work on your days off. You have no obligation to do so for jobs such as the one you had. They are never calling to say hi. It's to duck your weekend up. Hard pass. Boss not doing payroll before leaving on a business trip and leaving it to the poor office manager to tell people they weren't gonna get paid on time. I walked out of the staff meeting saying I'd be back when paychecks arrived. By the time I got home I was mad enough to call my ops manager back and quit. Why didn't the boss do payroll? Stated answer was printer toner cartridge at home was empty. Guess he'd never heard of writing checks with a pen.
My printer ink is low so y'all don't g paid. K bye. WTF. What a shit thing to do to people. That's genuinely amazing. I've worked for some shit show companies including some I'm fairly certain were nothing more than money laundering schemes but each and every one of them got payroll done on the dot every single month. I started work in a bar in town and was told to be at work at 7pm for my first shift with the manager providing me with a typed timesheet showing my new working hours. Went home and had a cat nap. At 5pm my new manager calls me asking where the hell I am and telling me I need to come in now. I referred him to my timesheet which stated I was to be in at 7pm. To which he told me the timesheet doesn't define matter. You do what I tell you. Hearing this I politely told him that I would not be in tonight or ever. Good night and went back to my catnap. Good on you. Where the duck do these people crawl up from? What did he expect? Ack, this happened to me too. At my first job. I was 17 and working at the local lake. My chain smoker manager changed the schedule but didn't tell me. Then called to ask where the duck I was. I had worked at the lake for about 4 months and decided that was the final straw. The first straw was when I, being sensitive, started to cry from being berated when I ducked up a boat sticker. No joke. This woman yelled to the other employees we got a crier everyone. And laughed. She made my life ducking miserable for those few months. The day I quit, I drove to the lake, went past the guardhouse without saying a word, and left all of my shirts at the office. I worked for a restaurant for two weeks that refused to teach me anything but berated me regularly for not knowing how to do anything. One day, at the daily pre-meal meeting, my boss told me that you are complete and total shit and you'll always be shit. I waited until they got busy that night, then went the duck home and never came back. You're lucky you got out early. It took me 9 months for me to leave a job like that. Plus I never understood how they could berate you but not teach you how to do the job in the first place. Reminds me of the worst job I ever had. Cut my finger one day. Nothing too bad but it was still bleeding. Asked my manager where the first aid kit was and they said we told you in training. Go find it yourself so you remember where it is. FFS makes me angry just thinking about how stupid my managers were at that job. Luckily I got laid off after a few months. Worked at Best Buy in high school. Some people from a different store transferred over and one of them took over scheduling from my supervisor. She gave me a total of 10 hours a week down from my usual 30-40. I had to save 2 checks just to pay my shitty cheap cricket phone bill with those hours. I complained to my sup about her scheduling and they raised me to about 15 hours. I couldn't understand why or what I had done to get cut so much. When my birthday came close I reminded her constantly to not schedule me that day which shouldn't have been a problem considering my shit hours. She told me constantly not to worry. Schedule comes out and that's the one day I am scheduled a full 8 hours. I try to contact her and they tell me she's on vacation and I can't change my schedule. I called to quit that same day. Then later I find out that the manager who I called when I quit had been snuggling money from the store at the moment I called her and was leaving the city. She never told anyone I called to quit. I had something similar happen when I transferred from one GameStop to another. It had been approved by corporate 8 months in advance. They demoted me from third key to cashier. Despite saying I'd transfer into the same position. And I went from 30 plus hours a week to one 3 or 4 hour shift. I talked to the manager to see what was up. And he called me an entitled punk and told me I'd take what I was given. I just sort of left. 6 years later. I'm managing a gas station. And he applies for work. My boss hired him and he's still a cashier at the gas station 4 years after that. Apparently he had gone to jail for selling pills but right after I quit. I wasn't rude to him though. Because killing people with kindness is more my style. I worked on a farm throughout high school for a very wealthy couple. The husband was a successful commercial real estate agent. And the wife trained dogs to do hunt and field tests. I primarily worked for the wife assisting in training the dogs. But as it was a farm, I did various things for the husband as well. The husband was a raging alcoholic who would get pissed if you wouldn't share a drink with him when offered. When his wife was out of town participating in competitions with the dogs, I would have to drive over to the farm multiple times a day to feed the horses, clean out their stalls, etc etc and I would often run into him. 
but I tried to avoid it when possible because he made me uncomfortable. Anyway I was like 17 and it was summer, so I accidentally slept through my 6am alarms one morning and didn't get to the farm until around 8 to feed the horses and clean out their stalls. Not like it mattered. Horses can't tell time. The husband was there and had already been drinking as I could smell it on him. And he started laying into me about being so late. He told me I was a poor white trash piece of shit and if my parents let me oversleep for my job then they're even worse white trash pieces of shit and I won't ever amount to anything just like them. Yada yada. I told him he could take care of the horse shit himself and that I quit. And as I was leaving he was yelling at the top of his lungs that he would find me and kill me. I never went back. My aunt got me a job as a tech in a chemical plant. As I was young and stupid I told the guy who was supposed to train me that I got the job through my aunt. He decided to haze me. After the first shift I already almost decked him as he would handily forget to tell me things and would berate and belittle me all the time. The second shift it continued and while I was working on a pipe he didn't close it as he was supposed to do. If I hadn't been aware of the rumbling and rolled away I would have been blasted by a jet of boiling steam. Or went to the team leader. He said I was overreacting but he proposed to move me to another shift. I quit. My aunt was pretty upset with me until she heard, through the rumor mill, that the guy indeed had done what I said he did. I was a truck unloader at Walmart. We unloaded freight into skids sorted by department. There were three of us who were new. Doing the best we can trying to memorize where the department skids are and hauling ass as fast as we could. The store manager came to check in on us and said we weren't going fast enough. To speed us up he pushed everything that was on rollers onto the floor. I walked over and gave him my badge and knife and left. I worked at Best Buy in the mid zeros. I started as a cashier and eventually made my way to the customer service booth. Which was something you had to earn. One day. It was a bit busier than usual and I was in the booth with another girl who was a notorious lazy shit. The boss asked her to jump on a register to clear out a line and she said no. So, the boss asked me and I said no also because I was already given another task. The next day, the pulled me into the office and told me I was demoted because of it. I walked right to my locker, grabbed my stuff, and left. Turns out the girl was banging the boss and that's why she was allowed to say no. But I couldn't. I lasted a whopping 2 weeks at Best Buy when I was in college years ago. They promised me, when I was hired, that I'd be in a specific section of the store to answer questions. They put me on cashier duty instead and didn't seem phased when I asked about what I was promised. Between that and how incredible rude the rest of the staff was, I walked out on my lunch and never went back. Edit. They never paid me. For 8 years. I figured it was a loss, until I received a letter in the mail about unclaimed funds and the state treasury, bam, there were my paychecks. I need a summer job while in high school so I applied at a local grocery store to bag stock clean. My first day there, there was some sort of confusion as to what I was supposed to do or to whom I was to report. I was sent to the front counter where the customer service manager gave me a till and told me to open a register. Mind you I'd had zero training on a register. I didn't even know how to put the till in it for duck's sake. I told the lady this and was told to go do my job. Within about 2 minutes at the register there was a line several deep. And I'm just standing there with the till in my hands. The customer service lady comes storming over asking why I had such a line and I tried again to explain to her that I was supposed to be a stalker or whatever and that I knew nothing about operating a register. She called me stupid in front of the customers so I handed her the till and told her to go duck herself. Walked down the street in my uniform and got a job at another grocery store. That's funny. I rage quit. More like quietly abandoned. A job in high school at a big warehouse clothes shop. Because I was hired to stock items and the manager decided to put me behind the register and otherwise on the floor. I stocked items for about a month before this suddenly happened. What used to be unpacking boxes and putting stuff on shelves became walking around. Constantly picking clothes up from the floor and. One day. The register. It was a busy day and our recently hired employees were like 14. So they were not legally able to operate the register. So the manager decided to put me on. I was 16. I was shown how to do a basic transaction exactly one time. And then left with a long line of customers. I did not know what I was doing. And did maybe 20 transactions on people's credit cards that I'm sure were wrong. 
When lunch break came, I went to see a buddy that worked in a blockbuster in the same mall. I had decided to never come back, but then I realized I left my jacket in the break room. Had to come back after a 3 hour lunch and pretend that I just lost track of time in order to get access to the break room. Then I quietly snuck out again. I used to work as a housekeeper at a really shady hotel. Wasn't the best job in the world, but the pay actually wasn't that bad. The owner and his wife were horrible to everyone, especially the housekeepers. I eventually worked my way to being the head housekeeper, but they kept referring to me as a maid. I don't know why that bothered me so much, but it did. Anyway, the rodeo was in town and we were really busy. I had every single room to clean, and none of my other housekeepers were showing up for work. So I asked my boss where they were and he said he gave them the day off. They're young and have stuff to do. They were all high schoolers and I was 19 at the time. It was summer, so he decided he wanted them to go out and have fun and leave the 65 rooms to me. I was already mad at that, but then it got worse. I get to about my 15th room. I'm exhausted, and I just want to get one more done so I can't take a break. I knock on the door, no answer, so I'll let myself in only to see a man standing naked in the doorway. I apologize and try to leave when he calls me back. He said he wanted me to clean the room. I told him I couldn't while he was still there and certainly not while he was naked. He said I had to do it. He was a guest. I go to my boss and explain why I wasn't cleaning that room. He told me I had to do what the customer said. If he wanted to be naked and in the room while I cleaned, then that's what had to happen. I threw my cleaning rag at him, told him to duck off and left the rest of the rooms to him. After working 37 years, I requested a leave from work to care for my partner who was dying of cancer. I had 8 weeks of PTO time and was denied the request, so I quit to care for him in his last month of life. Super fancy hotel housekeeping. After getting beached at by a fat ugly dunt from the expensive floor for not having more than one elevator. Obviously housekeeping's fault. Am I right? I found that she had wiped her shit on all the towels in the bathroom. Not touching the TP. I set the shitty towels on her bed. Covered in laundry like her suitcase exploded. Went and punched out and found another job two days later. Wealthy people are seriously some of the worst folks I've ever ducking met. Went through several interviews and started a new gig. I'd be providing call center support for Windows maybe some Apple support. Nothing I couldn't handle. I am. After all. IT support. Hell. I even cleaned the mouse while trying to take the technical test. I get a start date and am told it'd be 2 weeks of training. No big deal. I can do 2 weeks of training. I show up on day 1 of training. And. It supports for whirlpool washing machines and dryers. Hold the ducking phone. What? That's right. Classic bait and switch. I got up, walked over to my hiring manager and said, I quit. You hired me for Windows support, not washing machines and dryers. And walked out. Two weeks later I get a call. Hey, this is your manager. I'm calling to find out why you haven't come to work in two weeks. I guess you didn't get that memo. I quit on day one. Because your company lied to me. Got an $80 paycheck. About 7 years later I got a letter in the mail that a class action lawsuit had been filed against the company for labor law violations. 2 months after that, I got an 8 cent check in the mail. I giggled. Earlier in my career in residential HVAC I thought it'd be a good idea to branch out a little. To add some tools to my tool bag, so to speak. So I took a position as a lead installer at a smaller company. It wasn't particularly bad. It just wasn't in my wheelhouse and I grew to dislike installing and tried to shift back over to the service department. My manager knew I wanted to transfer, but wouldn't let me despite my prior experience and instead hired another tech. Now, part of the reason I didn't want to do install anymore was because of the salesman. They were idiots. The concept of a tape measure was completely lost on them, and there were times they'd overpromise at the expense of me and my assistant. One day in particular the residential salesman had us install the wrong type of evaporator coil. Makes the cold happen, in an attic without taking any measurements beforehand. It didn't fit between the joists and when I asked for someone to come help I was told to use your imagination. We managed to get it done. 
sort of, but at 5.30 it literally fell apart. I was apoplectic, called the salesman and unloaded on him. We hacked it together just enough, and we left. The next morning at the shop the salesman tried talking to me, and I quit on the spot. He said that we had a beating with a Linux rep and to reconsider. Please just think about it. He must have thought I agreed because when I went to turn in my timesheet in the meeting room he began to introduce me as the lead installer and service tech when it's slow. So I'll look at him and reply PSH. I duck in words. And walked out. My first job in aircraft maintenance was for a grumpy old dirt bag. I was a completely green apprentice fresh out of school. And the old bastard had no understanding of what his obligations were when taking on an apprentice and expected me to just already know everything. He'd send me to do jobs unsupervised. Wouldn't provide any instruction or guidance. Then get upset if I messed something up. He'd chew me out for taking too long to do stuff. He'd occasionally call me into his office and quiz me on random shit. Then belittle me for not having all the answers. Telling me he was going to phone up his buddies at the college and tell them how disappointed he was with the quality of their graduates. Guy was a total hypocrite too. Didn't have current manuals for any of the aircraft. Didn't properly track parts and hardware. He literally had a room full of random spare parts with no history. And took all sorts of shortcuts. One time during a windscreen replacement. Rather than measuring out the hardener for a sealant. He eyeballed it. Shit was supposed to set up in a couple hours. But it hadn't hardened after 3 days so he made me paint over it. We were supposed to cut open and inspect every oil filter we replaced. Looking for metal that could indicate a failing engine. He'd store all the old oil filters on a giant workbench without labeling them. Then after a year or two go inspect them all at once. If any had metal. There was no way of knowing which aircraft it came from. He got away with being shitty because the Transport Canada inspector responsible for audits in that area was a friend of his. And he'd boast about how audits consisted of them bullshitting over donuts in the break room for 3 days. Anyway, it was the last day of my probation and he called me into his office to tell me he had a very difficult decision about whether to keep me on. I told him I'd make it easy for him and quit on the spot. I worked as a painter for a franchisee of a student painting company and he kept telling me that he would pay me next week. This went on for about 6 weeks and the final straw was when I had finished several large projects that would give him ample money to pay me but he decided to hire on another person instead of paying me for all the work I had already done. Like $1300 worth of work. Then he tried negotiating down what he thought he should be paying me despite already having agreed in writing what I would be getting paid right from the get go. I was so mad that I didn't give him notice or even show up for the next day of work because I had bills to pay and needed to make as much money as possible during the summer. I wrote him off as a lost cause and took him to small claims court for what he owed me and eventually got my money through the court. Still was a pain in the ass though and as far as I know he's still working there full time. I was 21 working at UPS, was a truck loader the first year, became the fastest loader in the warehouse just because I like working quickly, only wanted to become a supervisor because my manager was really easy to work with and always wanted to help with solutions to problems. Once they promoted me to supervisor they transferred my manager to a different warehouse and didn't say why. Worked as a supervisor for a year and once peak season arrived, mid November early January, things were getting crazy and my manager was just a yes man to his boss. Never helped solve issues. Just said figure it out or just get it done. Well in November my best friend and I had won a world series of beer pong satellite tourney to get a free entry and stay at the Flamingo in Vegas for the tournament worth $600. Tournament was from the 1st of January 5th. Well during peak season it's nearly impossible to get time off and I looked at this tournament as a once in a lifetime opportunity with my best friend. Things were just getting so crazy and they weren't approving any vacation requests. I wasn't getting assistance from my boss with the workload so I just said duck it I'm out. I come to find out my manager. His boss and 4 other managers got fired for changing time cards to make their productions numbers look better. Which I found out is why they shipped my cool manager away cause he wouldn't participate in the dirty deeds. My best friend and I placed 46th out of 500 teams. It was one of the best memories I have to this day. No regrets. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.